walkthrough of how changes in depreciation affect the three financial statements. I have up here an Excel file that lets us track how changes to some of the different line items on the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement will affect all of the financial statements. And the approach here, I'm going to zoom out so you can see this a little bit better, see everything on screen. You can see all the different categories we can modify here, and you can see a summary of the changes up here at the top and some of our assumptions. And basically what we do here is we show what happens before the changes, and then anything that actually changes, we highlight in red here so you can see it more easily. And the good news is you can actually get this file for yourself. So you can follow this URL on screen right here. It's also linked to right below this video. You can actually go and just get this file. It comes from our interview guide and financial modeling fundamentals course, but we're making it available as a free sample for your use. So we're going to cover in this lesson how depreciation changes affect the three statements. Why does this question matter? Well, it's a very artificial scenario. No CFO is ever going to walk into his company and say, oh, you know, I had this great idea this morning. Let's go in and change how our depreciation works and record more or less just to see what happens on our financial statements. It doesn't work like that. Changes in depreciation happen very gradually over time, and they happen as a result of the assets, the capital assets the company purchases, and how they change, how their policies change over time. But it's a very common interview question because they want to test that you understand the concept of non-cash expenses. And so let's go through what actually happens here. I'm going to go up and once again enter in cell F22 here, depreciation increases by, I'm going to say 100. Normally they'll say 10 or 100 or something like that in interview questions. So let's take a look. So we have depreciation here. You can see highlighted in red. After changes, it's up by 100. It was zero before. It's 100 now. So our operating income is down by 100. Our pre-tax income is down by 100. We're assuming 40% for the tax rate. And so our income tax provision here is down by 40. And our net income at the bottom is down by 60 because our pre-tax income was down by 100. Income taxes are down by 40. So net net, we are down by 60 in terms of our bottom line after taxes. One quick note here, depreciation can be reflected either in operating income and operating expenses or in cost of goods sold or as a separate line item or in some combination of all three of those. So when you get this question in an interview, I would strongly recommend saying simply that pre-tax income decreases by 100 because that's always going to happen regardless of where depreciation is embedded here or if it's a separate line item. That's the ultimate impact of this. So let's move to the cash flow statement now, and that's always the order I recommend going in for these questions. Income statement, cash flow statement, and then balance sheet. So cash flow statement, let's take a look at this. Our net income is down by 60, as we know. Then our depreciation here, we add this back because remember, it's a non-cash expense. What does that mean? Well, what this really reflects is the fact that the company bought a capital asset, like a factory or a building or something like that a long time ago, or maybe last year or some prior period, they paid for the entire asset in cash at the time, but they did not record that payment anywhere in the income statement because it's a capital asset. It lasts for a long time period, lasts for over a year. So they didn't list it here, and depreciation reflects the allocation of that expense over the useful life of the asset. So if they bought a factory for 1000 the useful life is 10 years, they record depreciation of 100 each year on the income statement, and that is how you allocate the cost of an asset like that. In any case, we have no true cash expense in this period because we've already paid for this in a previous period. So we simply add it back here, and at the bottom, cash flow from operations is up by 40 because our net income was down by 60, but our depreciation was up by 100. It's a non-cash chart, it's a non-cash add back. No changes in the other two sections on the cash flow statement. And then at the bottom, our cash is up by 40, our cash flow really is up by 40, and then our cash is also up by 40. What happens on the balance sheet next? Let's go over here and take a look. Well, our cash and cash equivalents are up by 40. Our PP&E is down by 100 because remember, depreciation deducts directly from the net PP&E balance on the balance sheet. So that reflects simply the fact that over time, these assets are going to have to be replaced. A factory that lasts 10 years is not going to be good forever. After 10 years, you're going to have to replace it. So this reduces our PP&E balance. PP&E is down by 100 our cash is up by 40, and so as a result, our total assets are down by 60. Now, on the other side, no changes to liabilities, but under shareholders' equity, or really equity just in general, retained earnings is down by 60. Why is that the case? Because remember, retained earnings, net income flows directly into retained earnings here near the bottom of our balance sheet. And so as a result, since our net income was down by 60, 
retained earnings is also down by 60 and both sides of the balance sheet balance as you can see from our check down here. So our liabilities and equity are down by 60 and our assets are also down by 60 and that is exactly what happens here. Now if depreciation were to decrease rather than increase basically the opposite would happen. We don't have this built in because I only allow positive numbers here so depreciation can only increase but if it were negative essentially our operating income and pre-tax income would go up our income tax provision would go up, our net income would also go up, and then going through the rest of this, essentially what would happen here is that cash would decrease, PP&E would increase, and then over here, retained earnings rather than decreasing, that would actually increase. So that is what happens mechanically. What's the intuition behind it? Well, it's all about tax savings. Remember, we paid for this asset in a previous period all in cash. We did not save anything on taxes. That's not tax deductible. Depreciation is tax deductible, but we are not spending anything in cash when we record this as an expense. So you can see down here, our income tax provision is down by 40. So we're saving 40 in taxes, but remember we are adding this expense back because we're not actually paying it out in cash. So we get a tax break from the government and our cash here goes up by 40, even though we have not actually paid for anything in terms of a real cash expense in this current period. So that's the intuition behind this one. That same intuition applies, by the way, to almost all types of non-cash expenses, at least simple ones, such as depreciation and amortization, for example. So that's the intuition behind this. Just to recap, definitely go and download this file yourself at the URL on screen or link to right below this video. You know why this question matters. It's a very common interview question. You know mechanically what happens, and you know the intuition behind it. It's all about tax savings, or if depreciation decreases, the additional tax payments the company has to make.